Good morning, San Diego. We're at the San Diego Unified School District. This is the headquarters. And just a couple miles from where I'm standing, tomorrow morning will be one of the largest gay pride parades in America will take place. 250,000 people they expect. The superintendent of schools of the Unified School District is Cindy Martin. And Cindy Martin has bought into the homosexual gay agenda is promoting it and she's done something that no one has done in San Diego history. She has brought the rainbow flag, the gay pride flag on this public property. She not only brought the gay pride flag, the rainbow flag, but there's a flag underneath it. Most people don't even know what that is. It's the transgender flag. People that are born male think they're female or think women that are born female think they're male willing to do whatever surgery it takes to be changed into another sex and they think this is good they think it's moral it's normal it should be celebrated and they have a flag that celebrates it and we have a question for the uni for uh, Cindy Martin as well as her staff as well as the LGBT community, we have a question. It's really not difficult. Probably one of the most important questions you'll ever ask. Do you not fear God? Do you not fear God? The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And to fear God is to turn from evil. And of course, to not fear God is to embrace all types of evil. Our culture has, our Supreme Court has redefined marriage. Jesus spoke about the fear of God. He said, don't fear him who can only kill the body and can do nothing else. He said, fear him who can not only kill the body but cast the body and soul into hell. Fear him. Fear God. The Bible speaks on the subject of homosexuality. From cover to cover, it condemns homosexuality. Jesus Christ spoke on what exactly a marriage is from God's point of view, what God has determined the way marriage should be. Jesus said, have you not read from the beginning God made them male and female, male and female, and therefore a man would leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Marriage is for a male and a female, man and a woman, for life. That's the very plan of God. What God has decreed, anything else, is sin against God. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9, it says, be not deceived. For adulterers, idolaters, and homosexuals will not have their place in the kingdom of God, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Homosexuals will not. And Paul says, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived into thinking you can enter the kingdom of God just because public opinion says it's accepted, or even the Supreme Court says it's acceptable. God says it's wrong. But you know, there is some good news. There's some great news for homosexuals, for sinners like you and me. The Bible says we've all sinned against God. And in the context of 1 Corinthians 6, 9, where it says homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God, Paul says, and such were some of you. Some of you used to be homosexual. But by the power of the gospel, you've been transformed. You're a Christian. You've been born again. You've abandoned that lifestyle. And now you live a life to please God. God can rescue homosexuals. And it can only happen through the gospel, the good news. So the good news that we have as Christians to the world, to, to Hillcrest, to the gay pride attendees and those that are involved in that lifestyle, the good news is that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all our sins, those that have come to Christ by faith. You see, Christ was crucified on a cross, shed his blood, he suffered a substitute, someone to be punished in my behalf so I can be forgiven. Faith in this Jesus. He lived a holy, moral, righteous, and pure life. Faith in Him. It's a repentant faith, a turning from sin, a trust, a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. God changes you. I'm born again. I have new affections. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. All the things become new. I'm new in Christ, I'm forgiven. An amazing thing happens. I get his righteousness 
and he takes my sins. I'm forgiven. I'm clean. I'm justified. I'm reconciled to a holy God. And now I live a life to please and honor and glorify him. That's the very purpose of life. And I would pray that if you're involved in this lifestyle, if you complement this lifestyle, if you approve of this lifestyle, that you truly ponder what God has decreed and cry out to Him to save your soul. Put your faith in Christ and you will be forgiven. You'll be cleansed from all your unrighteousness and you one day will be in the very presence of God. I pray that God will give you wisdom and understanding as you ponder these things. Gracious Father, we bow before you in your holy presence. We know that you've spoken in your word, that you've decreed what your will is, and you've given us a conscience. Lord, I pray that you would move amongst this community, and move amongst San Diego, move in America. You would convict us of our sins, that we would cry out to you for salvation, that we would believe in this Jesus, trust in him, and proclaim him from the mountaintops that only by faith in Him can we be reconciled, that this wonderful gospel would go to all parts of the globe, ultimately for your praise and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.